A well-operated electrical grid is a balanced system. Generation and demand constantly vary, and we have to keep the system balanced all over Europe and ensure it operates at the correct frequency at all times. But the higher the renewable energy source's share is, the more fragile this balance is. So their introduction on the grid is a real challenge that Amprion and all other transmission system operators will have to handle. Presently, conventional generation plants play a key role in the electrical system. They use large rotating masses in their generators, so-called rotors, which keep the frequency constant due to their enormous flywheel mass and thus ensure grid stability. How? Let's take a bicycle as an example. When a cyclist at full speed stops pedaling, he keeps moving forward thanks to its momentum. And when he loses a load, his acceleration is contained by the bicycle's weight. It's the principle of inertia. With rotating machines, it's the same principle. When the generation or the load varies, the rotor's inertia allows them to keep rotating, thus ensuring true grid stability. With renewable energy sources, it's way different. Their generating units do not have large rotating masses. They're connected to the grid by power electronics. Power electronics devices work rather like a musician who would read his score before joining the orchestra. So he only follows the conductor, namely the grid frequency. The devices observe the grid frequency in order to inject their power. Therefore, they don't offer any natural inertia, so-called spinning reserve, that would help ensuring system stability. So what can be done if the share of renewable energy is substantial? Two solutions are possible. The first one is to keep a minimum number of rotating machines, which among other functions, can supply the necessary inertia in case of unbalance. In particular, by using out-of-charge rotors that do not produce power, synchronous condensers. At Amprion, we already convert decommissioned power plants into synchronous condensers and design, erect, and operate new synchronous condensers. The second involves using renewable energy sources, that can control the frequency by slowing down frequency deviation while emergency reserves come into play. This solution works if the renewable energy source's share is not too high, as is usually the case today, because the analysis time that power electronics requires creates a frequency drop that alone the renewable energy sources cannot handle. Then what can we do on a grid with more renewable energy sources? Or even with 100% renewable energy sources? Here again, we have two solutions. The first one consists in keeping the conventional plant's rotors to make them work as synchronous condensers. They then draw their energy from the network and are responsible for the frequency and for guaranteeing its stability. The second solution is to use the power electronics capabilities through renewable energy sources or batteries to create frequency and to ensure its stability, even with or without rotating machines in operation. In the same way as present rotors, these equipments would become the conductors, and the other renewable energy sources would just have to follow the scores. This solution is called grid forming. Today, it's being developed and tested on reduced-sized hardware in the European Migrate project. Amprion will equip new power electronics units with this capability. And at Amprion, we think that it's a real solution for the future.